Even as we receive, we can pour out to others, God. So you have the preeminence this morning. Have your way this morning with your maidservant. Always let there be miracles and signs and wonders. God, those who are infirmed, let them be healed. Those who are depressed, bring joy to them, God. Father, in the name of Jesus, those who are bound, let them be delivered. And Father, we thank you, God, that you are a miracle-working God. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, uh, this morning, I want to do it a little different because uh, um, many of you that I see here, you would not have known uh, most of my teachings years, years ago when I began to speak on feast seasons and so forth. And I asked the Lord, however, because I know Apostle has been doing quite a lot of teaching on the feast, and you guys uh, thank God for it, right? That you're not ignorant of what it, it is all about, right? But I asked the Lord, tell me more. <laughs> and you know, you wonder if you teach something over and over, and you, you know, every year you teach on it, what else can you get? How many of you know every time you read the scriptures, you can get more? So I asked the Holy Spirit, you know, uh, last night. Uh, by the way, even as I had written this message, I fell asleep. <laughs> so this is me this morning. What did I even write? <laughs> you know, nevertheless. So I asked the Lord, I said, God, just, just give me something more. Because it has to be relevant to now. Well, it, it cannot be a teaching from last year. Come on. Come on. We, we need something for 2024. Amen. Right? 2023 is already gone. And we have to prepare ourselves for 2025. Amen. So what are you telling us now? Amen? Amen. And so one of the things that we must uh, understand very, very firmly is that Yeshua is our Passover lamb. Amen. Can we get that clear? You see, unless we know that, we will not, and, and here's the Lord just told me, many people still don't understand even what that means. So this morning I'm hearing accurately, Joel, thank God, from the Holy Spirit, uh, prophetic things. Amen? For each one of you, thank God. Uh, but there's something I do uh, want to teach today. It's a teaching message. I know uh, my husband said prophetic message. This is a teaching message. We need to be taught today. Amen? So whatever is being said, you're either writing it down or you are recording it, please. Okay? So Yeshua, Jesus, is our Passover lamb. Amen? Because once and for all, he paid the ultimate sacrifice by going on that cross to shed what? Perfect blood. So that what? The wrath of God. Come on. Would pass over. Anyone. Who would receive. The blood of his son. Amen. I will go even further. Because there are many ministers. Who cannot capture the revelation. Of the feast seasons. As yet. Which baffles me. Even the very beginning of the gospel of John. It is said in verse uh, chapter 1. That I have nobody behind there. The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him. And said. Here's the beginning of the gospel. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Could I say something to you? This is Passover. In the very beginning of the gospel, he's speaking about Passover. How can we be so blinded? Not to see 
the importance of Passover to a believer in Jesus Christ. The offering of the first fruits, which please understand, the concept of first fruits is a, a celebration for every feast season. There are three. So Passover, Pentecost, Tabernacles, they all have a first fruits within it. Are you hearing me? But in this particular one, this is the first of the first fruits. Because Christ is our first fruits. And the thing is, it's not just Christ is our first fruit, but we are called in this feast to wave something called the Omer. Now stay with me because I'm teaching today. We are supposed to wave the Omer. Uh, and, and the Omer was just a, a sheath. Of, where's my pictures? Huh? The Omer is this, is this uh, a sheath of, of a barley. Barley was fed to horses. It was not the best type of food to eat. Only the poor people ate barley. Stay with me now. And yet this barley was to be waved. Symbolic of Christ who was beaten and bruised. Yet resurrected. That went over people's head. That's the celebration of the waving of the barley on the feast of first fruits in Passover. That's why it's barley in Passover. But guess what? We are also to be resurrected. Yes. Amen? Amen? The scripture says in Romans chapter 8, that's the barley. In Romans chapter 8 verse 23, it says not only that, uh, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit. Come on. Even we ourselves are grown within ourselves. You see, there's a groaning that comes when you receive the revelation of the feast seasons, you know. Eagerly waiting for the adoption, which is the redemption of our body. See, we are in anticipation of this time to come. Amen. We are called first fruits. How many of you are saved today? You are God's first fruit. That's what that means. And many of us today, we're going to give a first fruit offering. That we are going to wave. I have news for you. For those of you who don't know the teachings from years ago. Here's the news. The offering for Passover is supposed to be less than... The offering for Pentecost. We're just supposed to be less than the offering for tabernacles. Your ultimate offering will always be tabernacles. But today I'm going to teach about something strange. My title is Crumbs or No Crumbs. Crumbs or No Crumbs. I've never taught this before. I've taught it separately, but not together. We're going to learn about the role of the matzah and the feast of unleavened bread. And let me make sure you understand, because I know Apostle would have taught quite a lot to you. But for general understanding, the eating of the unleavened bread was symbolic of what happened in, in uh, Exodus. When the children of Israel had to hastily leave their homes, they couldn't put yeast in it. They couldn't wait for it to, to rise. So they, they hastily just had dough and water, mix it, had flat bread, and ran out of the place. Come on, are you there with me? So that's the symbolic meaning of unleavened bread, okay, the matzah. But Jesus, sorry, God says, look, let me tell you that it has to be as a celebration. It has to be as a memorial. You have to remember what you did and why it happened. 
So for us, we're not hastily eat, uh, uh, you know, baking bread to run out of our house, are we? See, this is the problem when people don't understand spiritual matters. They are spiritually discerned. When Jesus would teach the disciples on spiritual matters and they're thinking natural things, they would have no understanding of what was actually being taught. That is what is happening with these feast seasons. Amen? So we'll go to Deuteronomy chapter 16 verse 3 and I'm going to explain something to you. This is a teaching. Stay with me. Amen? You shall eat no leavened bread. With it seven days you shall eat unleavened bread with it. That is the bread of affliction. Say the bread of affliction. For you came out of the land of Egypt in haste, that you may remember the day in which you came out of the land of Egypt all the days of your life. So the God we serve is a God of memorials. Memorials are important to him. And he says, you're going to remember this day, okay? It's significant uh, for a time to come. So in preparation for Passover, uh, the, the chametz, which is the leaven, the one with the yeast. How many of you know there's bread with yeast and it's all big and puffy, right? Okay, so the chametz had to be removed everywhere to the point where it was so serious that no yeast could be found anywhere in the house. And so the children, even to today, they play a game. Do you know there is something in Easter called Easter eggs? Where they hide the Easter the eggs and you have to go look for it? Well, can I tell you something? What the real thing is? The real thing is that the children, say children. We're children of God, not so? But sometimes we're real children. The children will take bits of yeast and hide it all over. Under the tables, you know, under the cupboards, they would hide it all over. And the father of the house would go looking for the yeast all over the house. Why would the father go looking? Because it was the responsibility of the father to ensure that there is no leaven. That there's no puffed up behavior. Come on, there's nothing that will take them away from holiness, from, from sanctification, from living a righteous life. Come on. Are you there with me? You see, yeast produces fermentation, people who bake. And the thing about it is, it is part of the process of decay. Do you know it begins the process of decay? You leave bread out for any length of time, it decays. Something like me, I do that all the time. Right? It decays. And so here's the Lord. We have got to see that there's no decay going on inside of us. Somebody need to hear what I'm saying. There has to be the failures that we would have had. Come on, the things that we have, that we, that we uh, put things in our thoughts, that we will never do this, we will never accomplish this. Everything that has to be removed in this season. Do you know what else? Not just decay, but delay. If one person get that, you will get an immediate blessing. Because they had to move in haste. No yeast was allowed. It had to be flat bread. They had to go in haste. So the thing about this celebration is that everybody who had their cups open, when you had your cup open and the Lord was pouring in, if you truly received that, there will be no de delay. Come on, I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm serious. So all pieces of the breadcrumbs would be removed from the house. Say no more crumbs. Say no more crumbs. Be careful what you say. Because my message is crumbs 
or no crumbs. And? But we are saying today, right now, in front of everyone, we are saying we want no crumbs. We want no crumbs because we want no yeast. We want nothing that will cause us to have pride. We want nothing that will cause us to be selfish. We want nothing that will cause us to be uh, competitive as a believer. Or oh, I could pray better than you, and I could dress better than you, and I could whatever better than you. We want nothing of that at all. So we want no more crumbs. Say no more crumbs. You know what is so beautiful about this analogy of unleavened bread is that his body was broken. His blood was shed. And in spite of it all, in spite of it all, there was, it meant holiness. It meant sinlessness. It meant, I'm just, God is just giving me it. It meant purity. If we could get to the place where we could picture the concept of unleavened bread being presented to us and it representing holiness, sinlessness, and the purity, we've got to get to the final stage that says he took away the curse of death from us. You see, you see, many of us are afraid of dying. <laughs> Don't lie. We have, this we have this fear of dying. But can I say this to you? Do you know the first believers had no fear of death? Do you know they had no fear of death? They had no problem standing before whoever to present the gospel. Yesterday I was speaking with some of uh, one of the other groups of, of, the pa of oh, Pakistanis. And they're talking and they're talking. and You swear they're in a Christian country. They can go down the road and just present Jesus anywhere or whatever. And I, I, I told them, I said... How is it you can talk with such boldness and authority knowing that at any time they can snatch your, your wives and your daughters because this is what they do. This is what they do. You know what they said to me? Our confidence is not in man. And they meant it. They were like wondering, why am I even asking such a question? They are, listen to me, they don't doubt God at his word. This is why when you go there, there are so many miracles. Because when you pray, listen, if we pray that prayer about the cup, if I pray that, do you know there'll be miracles all over? Because they just don't question. The unleavened bread... Holiness, sinlessness, purity. That's who he is to them. He was a lamb without spot or blemish. Understand this. So here's an unleavened bread season. Tell your neighbor, no more, crumbs. no more crumbs. Tell your next neighbor, no more crumbs. Tell them we're going to clean house today. So that's what the Jews do. They clean their house, guys. They clean their house. Amen? Amen? Everything has to be spot clean. Just like what we do at Christmas time. This is the time they clean everything. Can I say something to y'all? Can I say something to y'all? What season are we in? No, boy. We're in Kedron. <laughs> what is Kedron? Not removing all this stuff inside of us, casting it in the valley of Jehoshaphat, letting it be burnt up. 
Do you see the connection? Because missiles are on its way. And missiles will know where to go and keep maintain their target if that stuff is still in us. Because the enemy would have one on us and say, okay, look, I could go get through here. And just as and, and instead of the US and Europe and whoever else supposed to be a friend of me, oh, sorry. Supposed to be a friend of Israel and will of course intercept and prevent all the missiles from coming and all of that. Let me, I've said this to you, if the U.S. was not there, what would happen? God didn't send nothing because there'd be an indictment. They would have been in wrong. You all missed my point then. I need to come again, you all missed the point if you all saying that. God, God will not send my point is, let me say it again because you all didn't get it. If for us, there is something in us that we have not let go of and cast it in the Kidron Valley. As God says, get rid of this. Get rid of this idol. Get rid of this behavior. Get rid of this foul attitude that you have. The foul mouth that you like to say. Or the foul thinking that you have. And making everybody feel that you're holier than thou. If you don't, there will be an X on your head. The target will be there. And the only reason... Israel was to protected. It was because of the friends. Oh, oh, let's not play this, you know. I'm telling you in the natural, the only reason was because their allies intercepted. I'm just telling you for real. You all understanding what I'm saying now? Okay. Everything that is happening in the natural is happening in the spirit. Right. Jesus never suffered corruption in his body. Do you know that? There was no decomposition. Do you know there was no decomposition? There was no corruption? Listen, he took the keys of hell and grave. He did all of that, but there was no corruption found in him. There was nothing found in him that anybody could hold and point a finger at. That's Passover. So much so the scripture says in Psalm 16, it says, For you did not leave my soul in Sheol, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. Never. Do you understand? He took the sin of the world, but he never saw corruption. That's the one we serve. If we serve such a one, when he prophesies to you uh, that you will be healed, uh, that you will be delivered, uh, that you will be set free, that you will be the head and not the tail, you better believe it. Amen. So what is this bread of affliction? Deuteronomy 16 speaks about the bread of affliction. Is it, this, is it for us to go around with self-flagellation? I beat myself. Boop. I beat myself. Is it for us to walk around feeling guilty? Walking in shame? We did this, we did that. I can't come to church because... You know many people, you don't see them in churches because they're up to something. And so you're so ashamed, you, you're, you're, you're beating yourself, whether of course we're not talking physically for us, although in, in, the, uh, sorry, in Central and South America, that's what they do, right? But I'm not even talking about, but we beat ourselves in our own words, all right? And so what, so what I'm saying is, but that's our form of repentance. So we think, well, you know, I, I did this, and you know, I, I, I'm not good, and, I, I would, and, 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 and you thinking in your mind that's repentance, that's not the bread of affliction. <laughs> is it that we're supposed to go down our knees for a whole hour? And the longer we spend on our knees, that means we are holier, and that's a greater form of repentance because we're spending more time on our knees. Do you 
you know that's what happens in religious denominations? They tell you, listen, you got to do penance. Is it that we have to do penance? Well, in this period, I'm not eating any chocolate. Oh, God. I'm afflicted, Lord. Is that what God is talking about? Who's the bread of affliction? It says his affliction, not our affliction. Listen to me very carefully. It is Christ being afflicted. And because he was afflicted, we will not experience that affliction. And in case you don't know, I'm going to give you a quick revelation on this one who's afflicted. The true revelation didn't come yet, but this one will come. Isaiah 53 says this. Come on, surely. You all know the scripture. Surely. Say surely. He has borne our griefs and carried. He carried. Uh, he, he borne our, our sicknesses. That's why that word grief is sickness. And he carried all our pains. He bore our sicknesses and he carried our pain. How many of you are in pain right now? Guys, I'm talking physical pain, boy. All you're, all you're still there. On, oh, God. All you're still. I am speaking spiritual things. How many of you in any kind of emotional pain? Thank you. He bore it for you. Are you there with me? You don't have to carry it. No, you all stop saying yes. You have to let it go. Because he bore it for you. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten, which is struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded. He was pierced through. He was pierced. I did a teaching on that sometime. For our transgressions. He was bruised. That word bruised means crushed. He was pierced through. He was crushed. For our iniquities. Every nonsense we did. <laughs> every foolishness we did. When he told us don't do this. But you're going ahead and you do it anyway. He was crushed for that. You see if we don't get this. In understanding Passover. Then we've missed. The revelation of Passover. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And here's the thing. It says finally, it says by his blows. By his blows. We are healed. Can I say this to you? You see that word blow? Or wound or stripe? It comes from the same word that says friend. It says by his friendship, you're healed. Do y'all never wondered why this, what this scripture actually meant? The scripture in John chapter 15 verse 13, when it says greater love has no one than this, that he laid on his life for his friends. That's what that means. It says every blow, every blow, he says, I'm your friend. I'm your friend. How many of you take and blow for any friend? How many of you have ever found yourself in a situation where it was either you or your friend that will get blamed for a matter? And you know it's a friend that did the wrong thing. But you stand and say, I did it. I ain't talking about children. I have to say it like that, sorry. Little children are innocent. They're pure. They don't even know. How many of you big, nice people? You see, <laughs> how many, no, 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 I'm being real here. 
Because I, I, I fa you've ever faced this? I don't know, I faced this. Where you had an opportunity, you were not the one at fault. The other person was the one at fault. And you know, if you only open your mouth and say you, you're going to get licks. But you stand in the gap. And you say it was you. I did it. See, that's a true friend. Everybody who wants to say I'm giving you a present on your birthday, that don't mean you're a friend, although I'm taking presents. <laughs> you all know I never used to take presents before, eh? That's not the point. The point is this. Giving somebody a gift doesn't mean that they're your friend. How you know that that person is your friend, they are able to stand and protect you when something happens. And say, I have your back. That's a friend. And how many of you here will be a friend to somebody else? How many of you willing Hey, that means your name going to get exposed all over social media. Let's put it that way. How many of you willing? Or oh, is she that did it? Or oh, is he? This time you ain't do nothing. That's Jesus. He took the wounds, every wound, every wound says I'm your friend I'm your friend I'm your friend I'm your friend if there's no other friend I am your friend Proverbs 18 24 says a man who has friends must himself be friendly but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother Amen? We must understand that when we speak about the bread of affliction, which is unleavened bread, it speaks of his affliction, not our affliction. It speaks of his affliction and his affliction that we partake in, in seeing the revelation of what he did on our behalf. Do you understand? That's what you're doing. Not you afflicting yourself because of this and you doing this to yourself because of that. I deserve this. Oh, let's go. Oh, 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 oh. Let's, let's don't go that way. They deserve it. Let's go that way. Let's try that one. I know what they did, you know. They look for that. Yeah. They deserve this thing that happening to them. No wonder. And we have prophets on this land who are prophesying wicked things to people, telling them, I would prophesy to you concerning your enemy, they deserve it. This will happen to them. That will happen to them. Be careful, people of God, who you give your money to, who you listen to. Somebody sent me something about some, some person on social media, uh, not local, and I didn't have to go far. It took me five seconds, five seconds. As I looked at the person, I knew this person was an actual witch. The person was an actual, I should have sent it to you. Uh, the person was an actual witch, and people in here watching. I'm telling you guys, you are called out, you know. You are, I'm not saying you I can't listen to anybody else. Absolutely not. But what I'm saying to you, use discernment. Be careful. And then people taking them God hard on money and giving it to them. Do you know you're presenting a curse? Then you wonder why things happening. Why that happening? Be careful. That's all I'm saying. Amen. Okay. Um, let me, let me go on here. So here's the point that I'm going to make. Here's the message. The message is, crumbs or no crumbs. There's a phrase that, I don't know if you've heard it before, it is an idiom that says, left no crumbs, or no crumbs left. Have you ever heard that? Yes. Yes. Right. And it actually speaks about being perfect, 
or being almost perfect. So, of, of course, in the natural, when they leave no crumbs anywhere, it means that the place is completely clean, right? But metaphorically, it means that whatever you are doing, you're almost perfect in what you're doing. So whether you're a doctor, you're a lawyer, an engineer, a singer, you know, you're somebody, you know, a teacher, I don't care. You're somebody that just likes to stay up in space and just whatever you do, right? Whatever you're doing, you're doing it perfectly. You are in perfect alignment as far as you're concerned with what you do. I do it to the best of my ability, and so I left no crumbs. No more crumbs. How many of you want to, you want to continuously say no crumbs? Come on. Come on. No crumbs. So then why would I use the term crumbs or no crumbs? Jesus <laughs> warned the disciples about the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Do you know that? They had crumbs. And Jesus warned them. He said, check their crumbs. Check their crumbs. But then he went on to say, it wasn't only the Pharisees and the Sadducees that had, you know, so many crumbs. They were all puffed up and prideful. Uh, but he said, the politicians too, boy. In Mark chapter 18, verse 15, he said it. He said, then he charged them saying, take heed. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. Who was Herod? Herod was the politician of the day. I'm warning you guys. Be wary. <laughs> of, and I said this to y'all before. Of presenting yourself here or there. Be very careful. Because we present ourselves there. He says, be careful of the leaven that will come by a politician. Crumbs are coming by politicians. Be careful, he says. Hmm. Well, you're quiet, aren't you? I know. I will mash up next year by the Spirit of the Lord. Everybody who go vote in race. Amen. I'll mash you all up. Amen. Because I'm neither here nor there. I could talk. Amen. I'm neither one side nor the other side. Neither is my husband. So we could talk. <laughs> They're not around. That's why he said it. And all of you who are looking at American politics... All of you who are looking at American politics, and you're either Democrat or you're Republican, you're let me tell you all something. Be careful what you say, because God says, watch the leaven that comes from them. No crumbs. Are you hearing me? Now we come to the point of the message. So here's the point of the message. Why, if after saying all of that, mom, you would present a message that says crumbs or no crumbs? Because as it stands now, nobody wants a crumb in the house. You're living here this morning and you're going to check your house. No crumbs. You're cleaning out self deception. You're cleaning. Come on. Hello. You're cleaning out everything inside of you. You're checking yourself. And here's God. Here's God. The very nature and character of who I am is revealed in times and seasons. If you can't get that as yet, you've already missed who I am. Because I may say something in one season... And I may give another instruction in another season. Should we today partake in crumbs or no crumbs? Should there be any leaven in our bread? What's the answer? 
please get it right, because I'll have to start over the whole message. Should we? Talk loud. No. Thank you, Lizel, for jumping it before them and then all of them follow you. <laughs> Should we partake in leaven now? No. Should we have crumbs now? No. We're, we are in a time where we've got to remove. What does remove mean? Break down. Break down. Destroy. Blow up. Annihilate. Pull down buildings. You think everything is not by chance? It's a season where things have got to be blown up inside of us. That should not be there. We are putting up tall buildings. Pride. It has to be broken down. This is the season of things being broken down. And anybody here who think in the same way as they did last week, the week before, and the week before that, y'all miss it already. If you thought about yourself the very same way, you thought about yourself two weeks ago, something is wrong. <laughs> it means nothing is being broken down. If you are walking around still, thinking that you are this it. <laughs> I'm here to say to you, God will deal. You see this thing here? It will come. You want, you want to get to that level? Let God do the breaking down. Don't let the enemy attack us. Let God very subtly do whatever breaking down he has to break down in us. People of God, hear what I'm saying. I'm speaking now prophetically. Deal with, listen, write down. I hear the Lord. You're not taking me on children. So going further, write down. What's all this prayer time for for the five people who pray? In? Write down. Everything that is getting exposed in you, that's in you. I don't care if it's selfishness. I don't care if it's self-absorption. I don't care if it's self-pity, self-loathsomeness. I don't care what it is. Write it down, write it down, write it down. Yeah. <laughs> write it down. You all want me to call out names? I don't want to call out names because I know the names. <laughs> yeah. Don't want to call it because I might look so and I need to look so. It is very important, people of God. This is not the season to be the same. You cannot think the same. You cannot talk the same. Your work cannot be the same. Even the way you speak, speak standard English. You represent the King of Kings. I said you represent the king of kings. You think God could take you over overseas and have you minister to anybody? If you can't, begin to study English. I'm going to learn this. And begin to learn metaphors, similes, on a matter of prayer, personification. Begin to study these things because that's how God speaks to you. He speaks to you through imagery. Get serious. We're too serious with nonsense. Amen. That will perish. Amen. It will perish. Amen. How many of you want a new car? But that will perish. Yeah. Sorry. You all understand. Yeah. It will perish. So what is he saying? Do we partake in crumbs or no crumbs? We've decided, hold on, right now, evangelists, we've decided that right now, because we are still in Passover, right? It hasn't finished us yet. Right now we've decided no crumbs, because we're still in unleavened bread. I said we've decided no crumbs, things got to be broken down. Clean up, clean up, clean up house. 
Come on. Spill on aisle three. Clean up that spill of my mouth saying foolishness about somebody. Clean that up. Quick, quick. Burn it up. And all who like to play the holier than thou, you don't have the thought already. Before you answer, really with your heart, not just words, I'm going to trick you with something here. Matthew 15. You see the word of God, the word of God, the word of God. Beautiful. Here's the word of God. Matthew 15 says this, verse 25. Then she came and worshipped him saying, Lord, help me. Something that we like to do sometimes and we should. Go ahead. But he answered and said, it is not good to take the children's bread and to throw it to the little dogs. Go again. And she said, yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs say crumbs. Eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Go ahead. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O oh, woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Amen. So this woman was crying out to Jesus to heal her daughter. Say intercessory prayer. Intercessory prayer. That Lord, we just pray, oh God, that you would just do this, Lord. She cried out at a time when probably she should not have even been there. But she cried in desperation. The woman's daughter desperately needed deliverance. She was crazy. And Jesus spoke about her being likened unto a little dog. Please understand. Let me give you a little bit of Hebrew thing here. The term little dog back in that time meant Gentile. It was in no way a derogatory term. It just meant another class of people. You go and you tell somebody there are dog here, they will want to beat you. As a matter of fact, our term for dog is really very derogatory. But not here. Jesus was not insulting the woman and calling her names. If you thought it for a moment, I'm going to deal with you. Because our Jesus is perfect. For two minutes I listened to a sermon and the, and the man, uh, literally a big, big, huge church. And the man said, everything in this Bible is contradictory. Don't believe everything. Those were his exact words. So the moment we read things like this, and we think, why would Jesus insult the woman? Jesus would not insult the woman. Amen? He was literally telling her, you're a Gentile. I'm not called to the Gentiles just yet. I'm called to the Jews. And she says, yes, but in a metaphorical term, even the little crumbs I can benefit from. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. You ready for the revelation? It's coming now, right? Jesus says, I am the bread of life. John 6, 35. 
But when Jesus said that, he was metaphorically speaking. Listen to me. You know why he was saying that? Because they kept following him for bread. They wanted natural miracles. And Jesus, as today, we want natural miracles. And Jesus comes and said, do you not know I am, I am the bread of life? You will never be hungry if you receive me, says the Lord. Crits and cheese tastes really good. So is it that there are crumbs to be eaten in a season? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, you're saying yes now, what? Is there a time that we're supposed to actually eat some crumbs? What qualifies you to eat crumbs? I want a, I want a bright person. What qualifies you? Come on. You always give me some answers. Thank you. What qualified the woman to eat crumbs? She was a? What qualifies us to eat crumbs? We are Gentiles. What's a Gentile? Anybody who is not a Jew. So you qualified to have crumbs from the master's table. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You still there? So leaven, leaven is not always representative of evil. Why do I say that? I say that because we're coming towards the end of Passover. And we are walking by counting the season that we are in from the first day of unleavened bread is a time to count. It's called counting the Omer. Now listen to me. So we are counting every day until we reach the 50th day, which is symbolic of the Holy Spirit coming upon us. Are you there with me still? So we have to know which season we're supposed to have no crumbs and which season we're supposed to have crumbs. Jesus says it in the parable of the leaven. Luke 13. And again he said, to what shall I liken the kingdom of God? Stop right there. What is Jesus talking about? The kingdom of God. What is Jesus talking about? It's not a trick question. What is he talking about? How many of you want to experience the kingdom of God? What is Jesus talking about? The kingdom of God. Are you got, are you got that clear? He's talking about kingdom business. What did Jesus, sorry, what did the Lord, the spirit of God do? This morning, those of you alive were not here. What did Jesus do when we opened our hands and poured out? He poured in grace. Grace comes and becomes a manifest as the kingdom of God in our lives. Next verse. It is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of a meal till it was all leavened. What does that speak of? The woman was a symbolic of the spread. Say spread. Of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The kingdom of God. It speaks of the very instant of, let me tell you something. You, you, she took one and she waited for it to raise so that it can be broken and spread for all in 
in that season to receive. Oh, you didn't get that. Because it's supposed to prepare us for teshuva. Which comes before tabernacle. Everything is with seasons, huh? Which comes before tabernacles. According to the Bible, and I want to, because I wrote this down now. Working with God's timeline in the spring festivals would prepare you for the manifest manifestation of the glory that comes at the end of this year. You see, you've got to understand what is going to happen between, my God, Passover and Shavuot. The leavened bread had to be waved. Remember we were waving the barley? It's not such a big offering. All who feel they're giving big offering, I have news for you. To the Lord, it's a small offering. You give a barley offering. So he gave, the, you wave the barley offering. Amen? But that has to prepare you for the next offering, which is 50 days, okay? And let me give it to you. I wasn't going to, I don't know, I didn't put it for you to think, so I don't know if you could pull it up for me. Leviticus 23. Because I think they don't understand, because now is the revelation going to come. I didn't give it yet. It's coming now, it's coming now, it's coming now. Tell your neighbor, it's coming now. Leviticus 23, verses 15. I'll just read a couple of verses. You need to know this revelation, guys. And you shall count for yourselves from the day after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, right? So that is the day after is from unleavened bread. Seven Sabbaths shall be completed. Amen? Go on. Yes. Count 50 days to the day after. Say day after. So the day after the seventh Sabbath. Then you shall offer a new what kind of offering now? Grain offering, that's wheat. So no longer barley. Offer a grain offering uh, to the Lord. Say grain offering. grain offering. All right. So let me, maybe I could stop there. Go one more verse. Let me see if there's anything else I need to say. All right, put that, put that down. So here's the thing. Put it down. There is a rise that will come in the spirit. In Pentecost. That will counter what the enemy plans as the rise in the flesh at Passover. There is a rise that will come in the spirit at Pentecost. Which the Holy Spirit will do. That will counter as you count. No pun intended. That will counter the rise that the enemy plans to attack in Passover. Because you have removed all the yeast. You've removed it. All the decay. So that can't rise. We're not supposed to rise any pride in Passover. We wave in Bali, horses' food. That will be raven. Humility. Holiness. You see what we wave in? That will be raven here. But as we count every day, and as we pray, prepare every day, in fasting and prayer that takes us to the 50th day, there will be a rise. There will be a rise. In Bali season, there's no yeast. Search everywhere, no crumbs. Your actions in Bali time is intended to bring perfection in you. The whole idea 
is so that you can be perfect before the Lord now. Yes. Everything has got to go now. This is not, we can't wait for down the road. It has got to go now. Because if it doesn't go now, and you plant in seeds for fruit-bearing season, which, by the way, down is down in, uh, what you call it? What's the last feast? Tabernacles. In the last feast, you will be a no fruit. You know, it takes long for trees to grow, for fruit to come. You plant in here, all your money in your pocket. Because if you are planting here, it is so that you would reap a massive harvest down in the fruit-bearing season in tabernacles. But this planting has got to be one where you release everything. And let it go. And let it go. My husband buried me. I let it go. You're not hearing me. I said I let it go. Because the moment I look to open my mouth and confront, I'm in pride. No, I'm not Jezebel. You know, I wanted to talk about that, but I ain't talking about that here. Not because a woman defends herself or believes something, it means she's a Jezebel. Huh? That term is used too loosely. Just throw that one in. <laughs> so let me close here. So counting, no, I ain't gonna finish yet. I'm just saying that in case you all get tired. Because I have, I have two revelations. The second one is good. Second one I've never spoken. Never, never. I was supposed to speak it last week because I was supposed to minister last week. But I couldn't, right? It was not God's timing. Say it was not God's timing. That was a good comeback, huh? Right. Seven weeks. <laughs> seven weeks of counting the Omer. You see why I need Jesus? Seven weeks of counting the Omer. Right? Chiefs, keep counting every day. Saints, every day. You are counting this time. Every day you are before the Lord. Every day you are praying. You are praying in groups. Every day. Don't let a day pass. I pray in the name of Jesus. Don't let a day pass. Because God is going to expose stuff that must come out. Listen, this is supernatural. It's not a natural thing. Amen? Amen. The wheat harvest is about to come. Amen? Amen? So I ask you, crumbs or no crumbs? That's the answer. Amen. Literally, that's the answer I wrote. The answer, it depends on the season. And the season will be known according to signs. Signs will give you the season. We do whatever God says according to a season which will come according to the sign. Let me ask you something. This is another message. Why is there a water cycle? Why is there a nitrogen cycle? I have so much revelation there. Why is there a carbon cycle, a melting cycle, an oxygen cycle, evaporation cycle? Do you know there's a breathing cycle in your body? Do you know every cycle, and there are many more of course, do you know every cycle is intended to reveal the nature of God? Every cycle Every cycle speaks of a season, but it's manifest in a sign. It is manifest in a sign. And we have got to get to the place as deep, deep believers, not swimming on the surface believers. God says he wants us to get deep understanding the cycles that he has created upon the earth and out of those cycles we will understand 
truly who he is. So here's my thing. The cycle, if the cycle of unleavened bread is the cycle of breaking down, the cycle of Pentecost is the cycle of building up and rebuilding. E college students, you're being taught ahead. Ezra Nehemiah. So I'm closing with this. Apostle, hear this clear, clear, carefully. We are closing with, how do you know the meaning of a sign? To know what you're supposed to do. How would you truly know when to eat crumbs, when not to eat crumbs? What is it that is so important? One, here's, 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 here's the scripture. Jesus says it's the sign of Jonah. Oh, hold on, hold on. The sign of Jonah will be the thing that every one of us will know what's supposed to happen. The sign of Jonah. That's all? Well, what is the sign of Jonah, number one? Is the sign of Jonah a call to repentance? Is, is, okay. You said it's the sign of Jonah. Is the sign of Jonah the call to repentance? Chapter 1 verses 1 and 2. Is it that? Hey, listen carefully. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to uh, Nineveh, the great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up uh, before me. Repentance is the sign of Jonah. The sign of repentance. Is that what we're supposed to do now? Is that what we're supposed to do now? After all, when Jonah prophesied the word of repentance, of verse, uh, um, chapter 3, verse 5, it says, So the people of Nineveh believed God, don't, don't go there, and proclaimed a fast, and they put on sackcloth and ash, and everybody repented. Amen? Say amen. Is that the sign? Is that the sign? Got to know. Don't choose the wrong sign in the wrong season. Is the sign of Jonah about symbolic resurrection? Are we not talking about resurrection? Is the sign of Jonah. Stay with me, you know. Is the sign of Jonah about symbolic resurrection? That previewed the, uh, the, uh, uh, the foreshadow of Christ. Remember we spoke about that? Jonah was thrown into the belly of the fish for three days and the three nights, right? But was this the sign of Jonah? That he did it. Was it that he did it? Or was the sign of Jonah knowing God's timing in it being done? Is it that you do it? <laughs> is it that you do it? Or is it that you know the timing when it is to be done? Hold on, see what. If I told you in August, hey, everybody, have an idea. Let everybody pray for half an hour. Good idea. Was it in the season that God said to do that? Is it that when God says something, we just grab hold of it and we run? Or is it that we take it and we wait for his timing Amen. for it to be done. Amen. And let me tell you how crazy it is. Even when we mess up with timing, even when we mess up with timing, he will throw us in a fish. Yes. Yes. If we are prophetic. Matthew 12, 39 says, 
But he answered and said to them, An evil and an adulterous generation seek after a sign, and no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. But hear me now. Three days, yum. Three nights, I yield. The sign was not just that he did it. The sign was when he did it. It was the timing of doing this thing. Because to today, listen to me very carefully. To today, I am listening to people who will talk about Passover and not. Hold on, hold on. They're saying, oh, we don't use Easter. We use Passover. But when you hear them talk, they're talking about three days and three nights. And they're saying start from Friday. If we miss the timing of God, we've missed the Lord. Three people got what I just said. Listen to me. Signs must have a prophetic purpose. And the purpose of the sign, ultimately, when you go backwards, it is to bring repentance. It is to bring a, a ministry of, the, uh, of reconciliation. That's the ultimate. But we don't start there. We don't start there. You go in the time. And when God tells me to stand there, I have to make sure I'm standing there at the time where God says I need to stand there. You know what that means? How many of you are missing church, boy? How many of us, when we know we're supposed to be here? Hmm. When we know there's an open heaven that is coming, we don't, we, can't, we know, we know, we just know something is up. I know I'm supposed to be here. But we miss it. Here's the Lord to us today. Many of us have missed the sign of Jonah. That illustrates timing. Not that it's supposed to be done. But the timing of when it's supposed to be done. That's why feast seasons... The enemy has stolen it, destroyed it, because he and all know that in every season there's an open portal. He knows. So I'm here to close by saying to you, precious people, that we need to exit our ex implosive behavior. Self-absorbed behavior. We need to exit it now. It's got to stop now. I hear the Lord. He says we've got to prepare for an explosive nature down, coming down to Pentecost. Amen. We've got to prepare for it. But we've got to prepare for it every single day. It has to be a daily occurrence of examining your heart. Checking your words. Checking your work, walk. Checking yourselves. And there's got to be no compromise. I said there's got to be no compromise as the spirit of the living God. Amen. 24th of April was the beginning of unleavened bread. We go all the way down and we count every day up to the 12th of June. I said we count the 50th day on the 12th of June. Needless to say, the world church system will have something on, in May. We are not. We are his called out ones. Listen, God has the apostles and the prophets, the end time ministers of the gospel, being told the truth to present to you so that you are in alignment with his perfect will. So when these arrows come, come on, when the onslaught comes upon us, we will be divinely protected, says the Spirit of God. Are you ready for that? How many of you ready for it? Can we stand, please? It's not what, it's when. It's always timing. It's not that we have to do this. It's when we're supposed to do it. Cro 
crumbs or no crumbs? No crumbs now. Crumbs will come. Because in the season of crumbs, the Spirit of the Lord will give us the unction or the power of the Holy Spirit to go out there and spread the bread of life. Spread the bread of life to all who are in our workplace, all our neighbors, all our families. Because we will have, we will be in a prophetic unction. A, a member of the family who never spoke to you or don't want to speak to you about the things of God, they will be open to it then. Because it's supernatural. Because we're operating under the kingdom of God. Come on. We would partake of the leaven. So that we can distribute. Do you understand the message now? We have to be sure that you get the message. Because now is not the time. Forgive me church, it's not the time to play. If you were one of those who just came to church and left, you can't do that anymore. The ushers will show you the exit door. Find one of those ministries that will do that. We are here about the Lord's business. We are people who operate according to God's timeline and in his timing. Jesus rebuked his disciples that they could not understand times and seasons looking into politics as some answer. Don't fall trap. Don't be entrapped by the enemy when it comes to politics, says the Spirit of God. Do not, says the Lord. I warn you. Just lift your hands. Holy One of Israel. God, we can only know you through times and seasons. Every single thing. Lord, you, you, you manifested who you are in nature. In agriculture. In the cosmos. Lord, in everything we touch, and everything we see, we see your cyclical nature. And everything with us is called to be an ascension as with the manifestation of our very DNA. The illustration of who we are for the very life is in the blood, Lord. Very life is in the blood. In this season, in this feast season, as with every feast season, we have an opportunity to ascend. We have an opportunity to be promoted. Lord, you test us before to prepare us for promotion. With every feast season. Lord, you've tested us individually. You've tested us corporately. You've tested us in our homes and our families. You've tested us in the workplace. Father, we pray today, God, if we've passed the test, take us into that promotion season. God, even as the Lord, we begin to step up for those whom you have inclined to promote. God, let pride not come upon us. Let us remove every crumb. Lord, every crumb, every yeast, every yeast of disobedience and rebellious behavior. Lord, every yeast of pride and, and selfishness, every yeast of competition and jealousy, oh God. God, remove it. We cast it in today. We cast it. We cast it, Lord, in the Kidron. We cast it, Lord, in the Kidron Valley today. We cast it in the Kidron Valley, oh God. We throw it away. Lord, that every day, every day, you will examine our hearts. 
Today will yet be another promotion. Today we are not to rise. Today we are to bow down. Lord, holding a sheath of barley in our hands. God, with our heads down, but waving just a sheet of a barley. Understanding it is all symbolic of what you did for us on the cross. Beaten, bruised, the wounded being our friend. Lord, let us see, let us see, let us see, oh God. The very core of our being, Lord. As we prepare for resurrection. I pray that those whom you have promoted in the spirit. That they will walk in the spirit. And they will not be inclined to the flesh. For those who have not yet been promoted. That in this season, the days to come in the counting the Omer a period. Oh God, that they Lord every day will pursue you at all costs. Examine their hearts at all times. Walk according to your ways in perfection, Lord. In perfection, God. That we will come at a time, oh Lord, in 50 days, God, we will come at a time of Pentecost. A time of Shavuot. A time where the children of Israel, oh God, receive the word of God. A time when they receive the word of God. Lord, where we receive the spirit of the Lord. We will not take the season lightly, God. And Father, Lord, as, as, you lift your, as you lift your hands, Father, I just pray for everyone right now. Do me a favor. I know Apostle will take this, but just hold your offering in your hands, everybody. If you have your offering, those of you who have your seed offering, your special seed offering, those of you who are doing online banking, get a, an envelope and just, and just write your name on it so you have something to hold for me, please. Because I know there are some who do online banking. Uh, that's even including myself. So if you're doing online banking, get an envelope and just put your, put your name for me, please. Put your name. We want everybody to hold something. Just hold something. I know everybody gave, uh, some people have already given the, their, their offering, but if you're here to give your offering. Just hold it in your hand. Father, this first offering, this Passover offering. Lord, it's a barley offering. And it is to, in the old days, it was presented before the priest. That the priest would bless it. And it would be used for the temple. Father, in the name of Jesus, let this offering be one God that they will understand the symbolic meaning of it. That it is to prepare them for a wheat harvest. Lord, wheat is what was eaten. As a matter of fact, wheat was all that was eaten. That means, God, that if they present this offering, Lord, Lord, that they will, you will meet all their needs. You will meet all their needs. You know what's in their heart. You know the needs. The wheat is symbolic of meeting every need. It was the staple meal. So, Father, we thank you today. In the name of Jesus, in this still open heaven, in this open heaven time, God, Lord, as they present the need, present the need in your mind right now before the Lord, as they present their need before you, God, meet every need, open heaven, meet every need, meet every need now. Let them be the spiritual point of contact right now. In this supernatural atmosphere. Lord, we consider it is finished. We consider it is done. Even the very meaning of it is finished. It means it has already been established. 
that which you hold is symbolic of that which has been established and it is only a point of contact so father we thank you for this point of contact and we thank you for the experience of the miracle that you're going to bring for every single person right here and father we thank you god and we praise you lord in jesus name hallelujah